if you've gone through the conventional medicine system to get diagnosed with Hashimoto's, the typical path is diagnosis, medication, and then being told that you will live with it forever. What if there were things, dial movers that were tangible that you could actually change that could potentially put your Hashimoto's into remission? That is what we're going to talk about today. My name is Dr. Emily Kybird. I'm a chiropractor and movement expert. I too have Hashimoto's. I'm currently in remission since 2018, and I help women with Hashimoto's learn how to work out without the burnout. And I just want to give a little plug here really quick. Monday, May 15th, we are starting the thyroid revolution. It is five days. It is free. It is five workouts, two masterclasses, and it's really to kind of dip your toes into a thyroid strong lifestyle as well as a thyroid strong workout, as well as giving you the tools to be able to do more to change your symptoms with Hashimoto's. This is what we're going to talk about today as well in the podcast. But if you're interested in a live, virtual, real experience of what thyroid strong is like, whether from a workout perspective or functional medicine perspective, go to Dr. Emily Kybird forward slash Rev. I'll drop the link in the show notes. It is completely free. I literally had someone DM me, what's the catch? There's no catch. This is all the information that I wish I knew at the beginning of my Hashimoto's diagnosis and the beginning of my journey. It would probably make the journey a little less brutal. Luckily, I got on the other side, got into remission. And I want to give women the tools on how to do the same. And if remission is not possible, like you didn't get your Hashimoto's diagnosed early enough before there was too much atrophy of your thyroid gland, then I want to give you the tools just to minimize your symptoms and feel like yourself again. This is the thing that so many women say. They're just like, I just want to feel like myself again. And that's how I felt too. I'm a very grounded person and feeling like myself is very important. So these are the tips that I'm going to share today. Hashimoto's is this perfect storm of these three things. Think of a Venn diagram of this trifecta that can trigger Hashimoto's. The first kind of circle in this Venn diagram is genetics, right? Maybe your mom has Hashimoto's. Maybe your sister has a thyroid issue. Maybe family members don't have Hashimoto's exactly, but they have other autoimmune conditions. There is a genetic component to Hashimoto's. And when you see a conventional medicine doctor, that's what happens. You've been diagnosed, elevated TSH, presence of thyroid antibodies. You have all the symptoms Here's some medication, and I'll see you in six months to a year to double check your labs. What they don't give you are the tools, dial movers that you could change or shift or dial up or down to start to put the symptoms into remission or just to have those symptoms not as blaring through your day. So the first piece is genetics. That's what conventional medicine deals with. The other two pieces we're going to talk about today. The second one would be leaky gut or intestinal hyperpermeability in that lining. So think of the, the junctions of your gut as tight junctions in the gut lining, like bricks with tight grout. When we are exposed to stress, some environmental triggers like mold, mycotoxins, certain medication use, or some of its food sensitivities like gluten and dairy, the junctions that were really tight can now start to widen. And in those spaces between the little villi in our gut, things pass through from the gut into the bloodstream. Things that shouldn't pass through, that should get basically bounced off the gut lining. Things like undigested food particles, viruses, bacteria, things that should not be passing through because you have this healthy gut lining junction preventing that passage. But when there's space between that gut lining villi, things will pass through. Things that shouldn't. And then it passes into the bloodstream. And then these foreign particles are in your bloodstream and your body recognizes them as foreign bodies and attacks. It creates this inflammatory response that is chronic. And now we have this low grade chronic inflammation, which can trigger uh, an autoimmune condition like Hashimoto's. So this is one piece to start to address is starting to heal your gut. Are there underlying bacterial infections, bacterial overgrowth, fungal overgrowth? Is there some sort of mold exposure? Are you drinking a lot? Are, are you incredibly stressed? All these things can create intestinal 
lining hyperpermeability, also known as leaky gut. So that's the second piece of this kind of trifecta for Hashimoto's. Genetics, leaky gut, and then the third piece that is a trigger, because if you've heard the saying that your genetics load the gun, but the environment you are in shoots the gun, basically. I've always probably had genetics for Hashimoto's passed down from my mother, but it was the environmental triggers that I was exposed to, stressors that pulled the gun and activated my autoimmune condition and exacerbated symptoms. This third part of the trifecta is stressors. Stressors could come in the form of mental, physiological stress, physiological stress like overtraining, which we talk about inside Thyroid Strong and how not to overtrain, how to work out so that you don't burn out, working out for your body to maintain your muscle mass and muscle tissue. Other triggers could be environmental load, adding to that inflammatory component of Hashimoto's. These are things that if you brought to your doctor, maybe conventional medicine, they will possibly dismiss. Usually a functional medicine or a naturopathic doctor can start to help you guide you through this process of discovering these root environmental triggers of Hashimoto's. Some of them I struggled with as well. Some of these include mold and mycotoxins, parasitic infection, heavy metal toxicity and exposure, endocrine disruptor exposure. So things in our beauty products, chemicals in our cookware, chemicals that are sprayed on our furniture, like fire retardants or pesticides would be included in that as well and herbicides. So if you live or grew up living near a railroad track or a farm that was not an organic farm, you might have some increase in pesticide load because railroad tracks get sprayed once a week to avoid weeds so that the train can go on the tracks without any obstruction. Things that we don't think about, right? Other things would be like particulate matter. So in my old Brooklyn apartment, we lived on the first floor. Our window was literally like five feet from the road and right in front of our window was a speed bump. So every time someone braked to go over the speed bump, every time you hit your brake pads, there's particulate matter that goes up into the air and then it gets on your skin and you breathe it even if your windows are closed. I used to find this fine film of black stuff on the inside of my windowsill and we didn't really open our windows because we were so close to the road. So it can get through the junctions of the windows. These are just some examples of environmental factors. And if you think about it, Jill Carnahan talks about this. If you have a cup and every time something is happening, like you're taking antibiotics, which kill your gut microbiome and you have to replenish it with probiotics. Every time you're stressed, if you've been living in a water damaged home, this is adding water to the cup. Your cup is the body. And then eventually the cup overfloweth, and then an autoimmune condition is triggered. So we want to kind of tamp down, decrease that load on the body. So our symptoms with Hashimoto's are not so present as well as potentially going into remission. So that was my experience. I'll share a little bit of my story if you haven't heard it already. Overtraining, had a baby, had some insulin resistance, living in an apartment with water damage and mold, had parasitic infection from traveling in my 20s. This was when I was 35, 36. So probably parasites for 15 years, 16 years. And then also some food intolerances like to gluten and dairy, uh, corn and soy, actually a lot of food intolerances at first, but as I healed my gut and I worked through these environmental factors, I could reintroduce more foods. I wasn't on a strict elimination diet forever because I would basically be eating well, three things. So think about this trifecta. You've probably with Hashimoto's gone through the genetic component where you've been diagnosed. Maybe your mother, your sister has it and you're given medication. The other two pieces, leaky gut, as well as the environmental stressors, we're going to talk about next week in the Thyroid Revolution, my five-day free challenge, two parts masterclass in addition to workouts. And we're going to talk about the two masterclass topics are how to eat to lose weight with Hashimoto's, as well as how to identify environmental triggers contributing to that inflammatory load. How can we dial down that overflowing cup? So that maybe it's just like a cup half full and you still have space to, for your body to be resilient, to handle other loads, as well as potentially going into remission. 
and decreasing the severity and intensity of your symptoms. So if you're someone who has taken medication and you're like, I do not feel better. Maybe you've gone back and forth with your doctor a couple of times to tweak your medication or dial in your medication properly. And you're like, I still don't feel better. Now it's time to start to look maybe outside of what the conventional medicine realm has shared, which is, do you have leaky gut symptoms? How do you identify those? How do you get to the root cause of those? How do you treat the root cause? And then how do you start to repair your gut and get better? We're going to share that in next week's masterclass. If you want to join, it's dremilykyber.com forward slash rev, R-E-V. The other piece, if you're not feeling better, but you're on medication is, are there environmental factors contributing to the load on your body and your body just like can't catch a break? Maybe every time you push yourself too hard or just a little bit, you feel like you're constantly getting sick. You feel like you're holding on to extra weight. You feel like you can start a sentence, but you can't finish it. Like you kind of feel like dumb when you talk. That's brain fog. Or maybe you have joint pain and muscle aches that just aren't going away. And there's no biomechanical reason to them. Maybe there's environmental load involved. So we're going to talk about that next week in the masterclass. In the past, I've done a masterclass where you're sitting and learning a challenge where you're moving your body. And this time, while it might sound overwhelming, it is not. It's a little bit of both. It's workout piece as well as masterclass piece because that's what Thyroid Strong is. If you are curious like, oh, what is Thyroid Strong, the actual six week or 12 week program, it is literally workouts three days a week. There's rehab components and then there's functional medicine components. And I really don't know of any other workout training course app that has a functional medicine piece. And I also don't have, to my knowledge, any functional medicine piece course that has a workout component. So it's really marrying the best of both worlds. It's really what I wish the fitness in the medical world would talk about, which is like, I literally went to a lecture last night, a functional medicine lecture, and the speaker was asked, you know, how do you recommend that people with autoimmune conditions work out? And he's like, eh, just try to get them to sweat. And I was like, how do you get them to sweat? Like so many different ways. He's like, yeah, just try to get them to move their body. Here's someone who's in the functional medicine community who sees patients, train, like trains other physicians. And not that he was a pitcher of health, like he had a little bit of a belly, but I think there's a disconnect between the fitness world and the conventional medicine world, as well as the fitness world with the functional medicine world. And so this is why I bring this free information next week, starting May 15th, because I think it's important for women to know when they go see their doctor. I literally have a woman inside that was strong. She drives three hours in Iowa to go see her endocrinologist. And when she has that time with her endo, I want her to ask better questions. I want her to be so knowledgeable. And ideally, the endocrinologist would come to her with those questions in the history to ask better questions, to get better answers, to feel like yourself again, to feel better. May 15th, we start next week on Monday, dremilykybird.com forward slash rev, the thyroid revolution. We're going to get after it with workouts. Don't worry. All levels can do this as well as two master classes. So there's a piece to feed your body and then there's a piece to feed your mind. And this is really what Thyroid Strong looks like on the inside. I wanted to give you a little taster. If you show up for all the live components, I'm going to have a way to track. You get into entered into a raffle to win a walking pad, my favorite walking pad, the under the desk walking pad from walkingpad.com or a kettlebell up to 16 kilos from my favorite kettlebell company, Kettlebell Kings. Starts Monday, May 15th, show up for all five and you'll get entered into a raffle. Go to the link, dremilykyber.com forward slash rev. And I hope to see you there, ladies.